Regulators! Mount up! Every single day I'm gonna make Something great That's my way Every single day I'm gonna make Okay, the first thing we want to do is uh, figure out where we're going to drill these holes. So, from the top of this kettle down to where the bracket that feeds the propane into the kettle, we need to measure that. And what I do is I just take my tape measure and I come down and it's about five and a half inches to those holes, to these two holes. So I'll write that down. Then down to the propane hole, we're looking at about eight and a half on center. And in between these, I'm gonna line up my two inch. So they're one inch apart, center to center. We'll write Next, that down. We have our two upper holes for the bell lid and the hole down lower for the bell lid. I guess it's here. And then we also have our bracket. So these are one inch down, and the top of your bracket is one inch down from the lid. So we'll make note of that. Okay, so there's my crude drawing of where the propane igniter goes into it. Uh, we're going to say it's on center line of the kettle. Uh, the bolt holes are five and a half down, they're one inch apart. And then the actual propane hole is eight and a half inches down. Then for your bell lid holder, uh, they're one inch down, uh, two outside ones. And then the center one is eight and a half down, and that's on center line two. Uh, so when we get in there, those are what we're looking at. We know that the bracket sit, the top of the bracket is one inch down. I'll show you what I do. Okay, what I have is a piece of plywood that I put some um, paper down on top of. Uh, this was packaging paper that came in a box um, that I'm going to use. So I laid it out there. It wasn't wide enough, so I actually had to put two sheets on here. This is basically 34 inches by, I would say, 40. Um, so what I'm going to first do is I'm going to lay out a square that's 30 inches. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take tape measure and we know that this is 34 across so I'm going to come in now keep in mind I'm a lefty so my hand is going to be in the way and this is 34 basically so I can come in two inches on each end so we'll go 2, 34, 32 so there's 30 inches across there like so, roughly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here, since this is my straight edge, I'm going to put a two, and we'll come over here, put a two. Then I'm going to take my level, I'm going to set it on here at those marks. And what I'm going to do is, like I said, this is 40 inches, so I am going to come in five inches and make a mark here. And then from there, we're going to come over 35. Make sure we're lined up. Yep. We're good there. We're good there. We're good there. At 35, make a mark. And then we'll just come up to that. Come across. Move my hand out of the way. So now, I have my back line 30 inches across. So we're going to do the same thing on this line that we have here. We're going to come in at 2. We're going to come up, since we know where the end of this is, come up to 32, come over here. I'm up to 32. Okay. Set my tape measure down. 
Set this back on here. See, I have a scale on this one. So I'm going to set this up here on those lines, marks. Come in, set it at five inches on this end, roughly. There we go. Make a mark over here, see where we're at. 35, there's five, and I'll just go like this, to there. So now I've got 30 inches across in this box. Now what we're going to do is half of 30 is 15. So if I know that this is two inches in, I'm going to come in here and make a mark at 17. That's taking into account for the two inches. So this is 15 inches right there to the center point right here. So now what we do, we have 30 inches here and we have 30 inches here. We'll take our level, set it on here like so. On that mark and on this mark. Something like that. And then from there to there. Like that. So now we have a square basically. It's 30 inches here. 30 inches here, 30 inches here, and 30 inches here. We need to find the center point. We know where the center is from here to here. Let's see what it is. We want to come in here on that center point. I'm lining up my two inch, so we want 17 once again. So this would be the center point of my square. Come in here, you look. Basically 15 inches, come in from here, 15 inches, 15 inches, and 15 inches. So that's our center point. Now what I want to do is carry that center point out to each corner. So there's two ways you can do that. You can come in here, come down 15 inches, kind of make a mark, come over. 15 inches, come up, 15 inches, and you can just kind of set that on there, 15 inches. So what I want to do now is I want to make a crosshair on that. You don't have to take it all the way from the center, but you want it something like this. And I'll get into that in a bit why that's important. Okay, so there we know where the center line is of every one of those points. Now on for the next step. A kettle is 22 and a half inches in diameter. So half of that is 11 and a quarter or 11.25, however you want to call it. So what I do is I have my center line here and I'll measure up 11 and a quarter inches. I'm using a red pin now and I'll make a line right there at 11 and a quarter all the way around. This is right on those center lines that I made earlier. So we're coming up 11 and a quarter, bam. Down 11 and a quarter right off that center line like so. Once you do this, you can save this board so that the next time you have it all laid out. Oops, where do I go? 11 and a half? 
Might have been 11 and a half. Let me just, nope, that's 11 and a quarter. 11 and a quarter. And 11 and a quarter. So now I have my four points. What I do then, is I'll take my bowl, and in this case, I have the front facing towards me. Now line that on there, come around to the sides. Make sure I'm on the line, like so, like so, perfect. Now because I have the brackets, I'm not going to be able to get in there very well, but this will give you a good idea. I'll just trace around the bowl here with my red marker. And I'll really hit right where those center lines are so I got a good line of what I'm looking at. All right. So there's my bowl. Now why I did that is so that I know where to set the bowl I'm going to mark out and drill at. I now have a circle. I know where the center lines of everything is and I can make it easy on myself. All right. Here is the bowl that I'm going to be drilling out and making it into a performer. I've got a copper kettle. Now I bought this used, picked it up for 30 bucks. And uh, I'm gonna turn it into a performer. Stay tuned. Stop. Public service announcement. You are going to be drilling holes into this kettle. I am gonna be cutting these handles off. It's got one on each side. This style does. Other kettles don't. Some of them just have one. Once you cut these off, you can't undo that. Yes, you can drill them out and buy, you know, I have brackets that you can put new handles on them. Uh, but, and you can fill the holes with bolts and nuts, or whatever you want to do. But just make sure that's really what you want to do. With this video, you should be able to do this and put it on a performer frame or on a table, whatever you want to do, and feel comfortable with it. But just make sure you really want to turn your kettle into a table mount. All right, let's get into how okay, I... Okay, the other things you need to keep in mind is where your sweep is. I have them closed and I have it on here. This is going to be, when you flip it over, this will be the front side. It'll be in the back, but it'll be the front side of where your controls are. And then it spins like so, which would be this way once you get it. So look that over real good. Make sure you know exactly where your sweep is going to be uh, before you start laying this out. So I have my center line mark here. I have my kettle sitting in my circle. Um, so I have it pretty well eyeballed center line this way. Looks like I can come over a little bit. Your bracket, your handle has a hole right in the center. So I'm just kind of eyeballing that. Make sure I'm lined up this way. Back looks all right. Probably turn it a little more. So, okay. I'm going to call that good. Now remember, I'm going to cut these off, so that's not that big a deal. Um, what I've done is I've got a piece of half inch cedar fencing. And what I did is I made a mark center line of it. It's six inches wide. I got, and then I just cut it a little spacer. What I'll do is I'll line up those two lines like that. And then I have my center line here. So then I line that up with that. So now I know where the center is of my kettle. I have my one inch space down what I can do is take the bracket that I make, I can set it on there. Now, I got to make a mark on here where the center line of the bracket is. These brackets are seven inches long, so that's three and a half inches from the 
outside edge. We'll take a marker like that. That's three and a half inches in. So now we'll set this on my little spacer. I've got it lined up. Now we're just going to line up the bracket. There we are. So I've got my one inch gap. I've got my center line. I know where my two holes are. You can either come in here and mark where you're going to drill that out at, like that. Or you could just take your drill and hit it. Now, what I would recommend that you do is to actually put a piece of tape across here, like this. Ideally, painters, that blue painter's tape, because it won't stick too much, I have, uh, I think this is two inch thick masking tape. And I'm just going to cut me a section here. Hopefully I made it long enough. And we're just going to set it on here. Right there. And then we'll come back up. We'll line everything back up here. All that there. Like so. Take our bracket, center line a bit. Set it on there like that, come in, and we'll mark our holes. And then basically, all I do is I repeat that over here on the other side. We have our center line going all the way through the part. We'll just set it on there. Center line, center line. Mark the holes. There we go. We have our bracket position. Okay, so I've slid the grill out, bowl, and I'm going to drill the holes out. Now, a couple things. I use quarter 20, these are half inch long uh, bolts with uh, everything stainless steel, washer, washer, and a nut. So, quarter 20 is what I get. Start out by drilling a pilot hole with an eighth inch drill bit. And you're going to be cutting metal, so wear safety glasses. Don't want any metal chips in your eyes. Come on your hole there. Make sure you have a good sharp drill bit. Then I'll take that out and I'll come back with my quarter inch. All right, so now we have our two holes. Okay, so I have my two holes. Now I'm going to come in with a step drill and I'm just going to enlarge them like one size bigger than what I just drilled. I got this step drill at Harbor Freight. Um, I have another one, uh, but I couldn't find it, so I went with this one. But now I have that there. You can see that your bolt fits in there with plenty of room. And you've got room for adjustment if need be. So now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. I'm going to come in and cut the handles off and then lay out where the propane uh, tube will go into the grill here. Okay, got my cutoff wheel all ready. I'm just going to come in here and cut this handle off. Okay, you can see I've got the handle off of there. Um, what you can do is you can mask this all up, get some, uh, like this is copper, get some copper paint, 
kind of touch those up, sand them a little bit, touch them up, or you could drill them out and put a strap across it. Uh, either way is fine. Um, but, you know, this is going to be covered by, let's see, where are we looking at? Uh, the lid bail, anyways. Um, but for cosmetics, I'll probably just touch these up with uh, copper paint when I get around to it. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to cut this handle off. Now that's still warm, so don't be touching it. It's a lot easier. I don't know if you saw that. I came in from the top. I'm looking down and I can see where the curvature of that handle is. And I'm trying to go just inside that. Now you wear out these cutting blades quite a bit. So I uh, always have a couple of them on Here's hand. a little I tip say. for you. You got a burr on this side. Take that step drill and come back the other way. And it kind of like deburrs it for you. It takes care of all that sharp edge. And now I have the bowl rotated basically 90 degrees so you can see it better with the camera. This is my center line. I want to come up and drill out for that propane tube and the two bracket holding uh, holes. So I've got my handles here. This will be the outside of the kettle. This will be the inside by the table. So what I want to do is I want to just take a piece of tape I'm going to just run it up kind of the center line here, like so, so that I can measure up and make a mark. Now, if you remember, we said that that was eight and a half inches from the front of the kettle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just basically going to come up here, hold this over, and make a mark right about there. Now, I'm just eyeballing. Not, not, this doesn't have to be 100% dead nuts on. But if you want to get that precise, you can make the line all the way up and then hit it there. But I'm just eyeballing it because you're just sticking that tube in there. The main thing is, is that it's got to be eight and a half because it's got to be below, you know, your bottom charcoal grate. So let's drill that out. So we're going to drill this out. Step it up. So, then we're going to use our step drill. Now, on this, we're going to have a pretty good size hole. Let me measure this real quick because we want that tube to fit through there and it's like inch and a quarter at its widest point. So we need to make it at least an inch and a quarter. So this may take a minute or two. Got my safety glasses on. Place my battery, so we'll just see how we're doing here. Yeah. I think that'll work. We'll test fit it. Okay, I set the bottom grate in here, and I'm basically all I'm going to do is just line up where I want this to sit. And I will mark these two holes here. That way I know I have them in the right position. Right here. Like that. 
Looks good to me. Okay, so now I have my propane tube hole. Got my two uh, bolt down holes ready for that propane assembly. I've got my handle bracket holes on each side. The only other thing we need to do, and these are all options, you know, you don't have to put that propane tube back in, you could just leave that off, uh, is the lid bell bracket. Uh, and it's eight and a half inches down on center also from there. So I'm gonna get that one marked and drill it out, just like I did the other ones. That bottom hole I'm gonna drill out. Okay, basically just did the same thing I did. I just eyeballed center line, came up eight and a half inches, drilled the pilot, marked it, drilled the pilot hole, stepped it up to a quarter inch, and then took my step drill and made it a little bit bigger. It's like uh, three-eighths of an inch, just so that uh, my bolts can fit in there with no issues. So now I have pretty much all of them drilled other than the two for the lid bell, and I'm going to mark those once I get it on assembled. Okay, so I've got my four bolts, my four nuts, and uh, four washers here. I'm missing a nut, so we'll figure out where that is here in just a minute. So what I'm going to do is I flip the bowl over. Take a bolt and a washer, put it through the uh, bracket like so, and then I'm going to come back with a washer on the inside and a bolt. We're just going to kind of do this. There it is. And we'll come around the back side. Like that. Now I haven't hand, I just have them hand tight so I can make some final adjustments when I get it on there. Now like I said these are half inch. Um, you're going to have to put your grate in here and you may hit the top of these bolt heads. You can get you know like uh, three eighths uh, long or quarter inch if you can find them. Um, I just go with half inch. You can cut them off if you want. You can do whatever you want. Uh, I just go with the quarter or half inch and call it good. So let me get the other one on there. Okay, I'm actually going to bring you in closer for this. Um, another option you can do is this right here. I don't know if you can tell. We'll see. Um, what I've done is I've taken the the bolt, the half inch long, I thread it on a nut and then I put the washer there and then that that does is, oh, let's see if we can find it, there it is on the inside. You can see it's about a flush mount with the washer and the nut on the inside versus, uh, sorry about my camera, I'm trying to zoom in nice and tight on this so you can get a good idea. See there it is with just uh, a nut on the inside, not on the outside of the bracket. How much more it hangs out. And let me show you how the rack will come 